Okay, now you should have a good understanding of the different platforms and levels of hyperspectral data acquisition. Imaging spectrometers are complex instruments which include sensitive detector arrays, optical devices, and electronic converters. The interaction of the individual components, which is influenced by external factors, must be controlled and stabilized in order to make transferable measurements. Therefore, it is important to use a well-defined and calibrated sensor system. After pre-processing of the acquired data, each pixel can be represented as an integration over a relatively small volume element in a continuous 3D data cube. It is defined by its spatial coordinates x and y and spectral wavelength lambda. This 3D data cube implies a regular structure of the recorded data. However, if various parameters are not correctly described or are not correctly considered in the preprocessing, a regular structure cannot be assumed. Therefore, not only is the resolution important, but some other properties of your data might be as well. Most importantly, a well-calibrated sensor system. Raw data is recorded as sensor digital numbers, that is, numbers without physical units. To make them interpretable, every sensor has its specific gains and offsets applied to the recorded signals. The offset is determined by measuring the closed shutter and represents the thermally induced dark current. The gain is determined by measuring the sensor's response to a known radiance target in the laboratory. Though often assumed constant over time, calibration gain and offset usually change throughout a sensor's life. Therefore, radiometric calibration of the sensor must be performed from time to time, and there are different ways to determine the calibration coefficients. For example, by sphere measurements in the lab, by repeated observations of well-calibrated ground targets, onboard calibration, dark current calibration, shutter, and or lunar observations. With increasing spectral resolution, spectral artifacts or noise become more visible, most commonly as systematic deviations and non-systematic or statistical variations. Radiometric calibration errors result in systematic stripes in a long track direction. Dead or bad pixels that cannot be calibrated must be corrected by, for example, a spectral interpolation. Random or non-systematic variation of the pixel brightness are referred to as noise. With increasing spectral resolution, noise introduced by the sensor becomes more visible because fewer photons arrive at the detector element. Noise is often corrected using system and situation specific spectral polishing techniques in the form of filters. The signal to noise ratio, SNR for short, describes the radiometric quality of a data set. It is calculated as the ratio of signal electrons to noise electrons, is dimensionless, and allows for estimates to which extent absorption bands can be identified in a data set. The higher the SNR, the better the data quality. Further sources of inaccuracies are scanning non-uniformities and spectral and spatial misalignments that should be determined in the laboratory before launch. A spatial non-uniformity is the so-called keystone effect a lateral chromatic aberration. Typically, it is a simple curvature where the position of a pixel in a cross-track direction varies by the wavelength. It is considered during pre-processing in the orthorectification process by applying higher resampling techniques. In some imaging spectrometers, one important artifact is the spectral curvature effect, also known as SMILE, or spectral non-uniformity. It is a consequence of optical deviations and typically a simple curvature of the spectrometer entrance slit projected on the detector array. The effect can, to some extent, be estimated from atmospheric absorption features and must be considered in the atmospheric correction, for example, by spectral interpolation of the reflectance data. Hyperspectral data have a high complexity in three dimensions besides the resolution issues. For now, just be aware that calibration of radiometric, geometric, and spectral properties is essential for hyperspectral data, and the impact of a well-defined and controlled sensor system may be greater than with multispectral data. Make sure your data is properly pre-processed before you attempt any analyses. We'll explain the basic steps in the next lesson.